Good day ladies and gentlemen, this is Dr. Sanjay Sanyal. Welcome to a dissection of the head and the face. So this is, I've dissected out the superficial structures on the right side of the face of this cadaver. Therefore most of the structures are all shrunken. But let me now quickly reflect out the skin as I have incised them. And I'm going to show you the structures as and when we <coughs> expose them. So I have reflected out the skin which I have already dissected out before. I'm reflecting the skin on the other side also. Then I'm reflecting the skin over the chin and the mandible. And I'm reflecting the skin over the parotid region. Okay. So now let's see what are the structures which we can see here. Let's start with the nose. This is the, the septum or the columella of the nose. If you feel here, you feel the hard part. And that is the nasal bones, which we have already seen. And just under the nasal bones here, this is the septal cartilage. And attached to the septal cartilage, we have two other cartilages, which are the lateral nasal cartilages. They all are united to each other. So this is one part of the cartilaginous framework of the nose. And below that, we had mentioned U-shaped alar cartilages, if you remember. Can you see this one cartilage here? This goes like this. It goes all the way and it goes to the septum of the nose. So this is one U-shaped alar cartilage. And on the other side, this is the other U-shaped alar cartilage, which goes like this and goes around the nose and it comes like this. So that's why these are called the U-shaped alar cartilages because they form the ala and they are U-shaped. <coughs> and they are the ones which cause flaring of the nostrils when you're angry or when you're breathing deeply. So that is about the structures which we can see in the nose. Now let's take a look at, as I told you, the muscles are all atrophied here. I'm going to show you what we have salvaged of the orbicularis oculi, which is hardly visible. If you look very closely, you'll see some very thin fibers going in an orbicular fashion. So these are the fibers of the orbicularis oculi, which are encircling the orbit as well as on the undersurface of the skin. So this is one side. Let me reflect the other side and you can see the fibers of the orbicularis oculi. So these are the fibers of the orbicularis oculi and inside the palpebral fissure, you can see the eye is completely sunken and atrophied. It has almost become what is known as thysis bulbi. So we shall not focus on that anymore. That's the next thing which I wanted to show you. Now let's see what are the muscles can we see here. Most of the muscles that we read in the book are not as clearly visible here, but we can see these are the orbis, orbicularis oris fibers here, which encircle. And these are the fibers of the zygomaticus minor and the zygomaticus major here. These are the fibers of the zygomaticus minor and zygomaticus major. They're not as big as you can see in the model here. You can see some muscle fibers here. Okay. One prominent muscle that we can see and which I'm going to show you now is this muscle, this muscle. And I'm sure all of you have guessed what this muscle is. This is the masseter muscle because this is a very strong muscle and you can see it's got a very strong tendinous attachment to the, and the zygomatic arch and it goes all the way down and gets inserted onto the masseter tubercle on the lateral side of the angle of the mandible. So this is the masseter muscle. Now that we have seen the masseter muscle, let me show you the next structure that you have been waiting for. Let's reflect the skin here. Let me put this back here. And you have guessed what this is. This is the parotid gland. In fact, it is fused with the parotidomesitric fascia. The parotid sheath is the parotidomesitric fascia, which fuses with the mesitric sheath, and it is a continuation of the investing layer of the cervical fascia. What I have done is I have split the parotid gland into, as I told you in class, into a superficial and a deep portion. It, this is located on the deep portion, which is located in the bed of the parotid. And what is that important structure which divides the parotid gland into its superficial and deep parts? And you can see the retromandibular vein here. This is the retromandibular vein. This is the retromandibular. And you can see that it is running behind the ramus of the mandible here. So this is the retromandibular vein. And how was the retromandibular vein formed? It was formed by the downward superficial temporal meeting with the maxillary vein and it formed the retromandibular vein. And this is the one which splits the gland into a superficial part and the deep part. And this plane that you see, which we have dissected out, is called the fascio venous plane of Peti. And running on the retromandibular vein, we can see some of the fibers of the facial nerve here. These are some of the fibers of the facial nerve. Just to bring you up to speed, the facial nerve emerges through the stylomastoid foramen, which is located here, where my forcep has gone. And from there, it curves around like this. It goes through the parotid and it breaks up into a plexus and it runs like this and then it supplies the face. The fibers are too small to be dissected out. 
So what we do is during surgery, we dissect this out with the fascia venous plane of Peti and we save, try to safeguard the face. So this is the retromandibular vein. Okay, now that we have seen the retromandibular vein and the, some of the fibers of the facial nerve, the superficial and the deep parts of the parotid gland with the parotid sheath, now the next structure that you've been waiting for, and this is that. This is the parotid duct, the Stenson's duct. And as you know, it arises from the anterior border of the parotid. So here is the parotid back in its place. It is coming from the anterior border of the parotid. It runs on the surface of the masseter muscle, and then it goes and it pierces through the buccinator. And this is the buccinator muscle. This is the buccinator muscle. And it pierces through the buccinator, and it opens opposite the crown of the upper second molar too. So this is the parotid or the Stenson's duct. This is the zygomatic bone. This is the prominence of the cheek that we see here. So therefore, this is the maxilla. So what do we expect to see in the maxilla? We expect to see the foramen, which the intraorbital foramen. And it's rather small, but we can see it here. This is the intraorbital foramen. And we can see the intraorbital nerve is coming out here. This is the intraorbital nerve, the cut portion of the intraorbital nerve, which is coming from the floor of the orbit, intraorbital fissure, groove, canal, foramen. And this is the intraorbital nerve. And this is the one which supplies the middle one third of the face. So this is the, zygo the maxilla, this is the zygoma. This is the zygomatic arch. Okay, now let's see which other muscle I've already told you. This is the buccinator muscle. The buccinator muscle, it's attached to the pterygomandibular raphe posteriorly and anteriorly it gets merged with the modulus of the oral cavity at the angle of the mouth. The modulus is a fibromuscular structure where seven muscles get attached and they form the angle of the mouth. Now let's take a look at the next structure. And the next structure is this one. I think all of you have guessed it. Can you see it's slightly tortuous here? This is the facial artery. The facial artery that we know, it arises from the external carotid artery. It First, it runs under the mandible. And then it grooves the submandibular gland, which I'm going to show you. And then it comes out from the inferior part of the mandible in front of the masseter. Can you see? This is the masseter. It comes in front. And then in a tortuous fashion, it runs up. And as it runs up, it gives an inferior labial branch, superior labial branch. It gives an external, uh, the lateral nasal branch. And then at the angle of the lower border of the orbit, it becomes known as the angular artery. It gives uh, the inferior palpebral, superior palpebral branch, and then it finishes off here. So this is the course of the facial artery, but we can see part of it here, and the facial nerve accompanies it. When the facial artery emerges from under the mandible and it comes onto the external surface of the mandible below the lower margin, it makes a groove on the posterior aspect of the submandibular salivary gland, which I'm going to tell you when I come to the oral cavity. And this is the submandibular salivary gland. The submandibular salivary gland is under the mandible here. It is part of the submandibular triangle, which I'm going to tell you later. And this is the submandibular salivary gland. So it forms a groove on the posterior aspect of the submandibular salivary gland. And finally, we cannot see all the muscles of the chin, but some of the fibers we can see these are the fibers of the depressor anguli oris. And under that, we have the depressor labi inferioris and the risorius and the, some of the fibers of the mentalis. So these are all the structures which I wanted to show you on the face that, that we have been able to dissect out. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day. Dr. Sanjay Sanyal signing out.